Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to verify trigonometric, trigonometric identities by using um, our code function as well as even an odd identity. So I'm going to kind of use these you know, just off my brain. So if you're not familiar with the code function identities um, or with the even odd identities, make sure you go ahead and either uh, watch the video I have for that or go ahead and you know, take a look at your book or your notes, whatever, to go and look at those identities because that's what we're going to use. Now remember when verifying an identity, we we're trying to show that the left side of an equation sign is equal to the right side. And you can see in each of these um, examples here, the right side and the left side do not look very simple at all. So whenever I'm looking to verify an identity, you know, one of the key things I was looking to is, you know, um, pick a side and try to simplify that side. And usually the side that you want to pick is going to be the one that's going to be the most complicated. And a lot of the times, that's going to deal with if it's going to have fractions, if you're going to have an operation such as multiplication, addition, um, or especially addition or subtraction, um, and or often if there's identities such as Pythagorean identities, which we're not going to go over in here. Actually, we will do one. Um, even an odd or cofunction identities. Use all those identities to transform the functions to help you simplify to see if you can show that one side is going to look exactly like the other side. All right, so um, first thing here is I have tangent of pi halves minus theta. That automatically triggers in my brain cofunction identity, right? Now remember, this is going to represent the cotangent of theta, and then times tangent of theta equals 1. Well, we know that cotangent and tangent are reciprocal, are reciprocal functions of each other. So when you multiply them, they just equal to 1. So therefore, obviously, 1 equals 1, which is just going to be verified. On the next example here, we have a fraction. So I'm going to work on that side. You can obviously see this is more difficult than the right side here. Um, and when looking at that, I know that cosine of pi, pi halves minus x, um, that's going to be the cofunction identity for sine of x. And then the sine of pi halves minus x is using the cofunction identity is going to give me cosine of x. Well, sine of x over cosine of x we know is the same thing as tangent of x, which is the same as our right side. So therefore, now it has been verified. Uh, now let's go and get into our even and odd identities. So remember, the even and odd identities are a little bit different here. Um, they basically determine if we're dealing with an odd or an even function, where the only even function we have is cosine and secant. So the even odd identities tells us that cosecant of negative x is going to be equivalent to negative cosecant of x. All over the secant of negative x is equivalent to secant of x. Now, that doesn't automatically you know, scream into a brain, oh, that's a negative cotangent. So to get a better idea of that, I'm going to rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines. So I can rewrite this as negative 1 over sine of x, which is the same thing as cosecant of x, divided by 1 over cosine of x. I'm not going to use parentheses here. So therefore, now I have a fraction divided by a fraction. Remember, to simplify that, we can multiply by the reciprocal on um, top and bottom. So that would be cosine of x over cosine of x. Oops, I'm sorry. Cosine of x over 1. Cosine of x over 1. Any times you have a function or a number multiplied by its reciprocal, it's going to multiply to 1. And then here, I'm left with cosine of x over negative sine of x cosine of x over sine of x. And again, that's negative, which we know is equivalent to negative cotangent of x, which equals verification. Sorry, I kind of ran out of space. That looks a little bit odd. But basically, what I did is I went down, went over, and then down. Sorry about that. That's not really the best way to do it. But I ran out of space, so that's what's going to happen. All right. Um, now let's get into the next one here. I have cosine squared of beta plus cosine squared of pi divided by 2 minus beta. Again, once we see, whenever I see that pi divided by 2 or the 90 minus, you know, x or minus your angle, I always think my cofunction identity. So cosine of theta uh, or cosine squared of pi squared minus pi squared divided by 2 minus beta is going to equal sine squared. So therefore, I have cosine squared of beta plus sine squared of beta equals 1. Well, we know by using our Pythagorean identities, the cosine squared plus sine squared of any angle is going to equal 1. So therefore, we have now verified our function. And the next example here, uh, tangent is an odd function. So therefore, tangent of negative x is going to be equivalent of negative tangent of x. So I'm going to work on the right side of this case. You can see that the right side is more difficult than um, the left side. So I have negative cosine of x times a negative tangent of x. And again, to get a better look of this, I'm going to transform um, tangent in terms of sines and cosines. So that would be negative cosine of x um, times a negative 
sine of x over cosine of x. To look at this a little bit better, I'm going to put cosine over 1. Therefore, you can see a cosine's in the numerator and a cosine's in the denominator. Those will divide to 1. The negatives are going to multiply to give you a positive 1. So therefore, I'm just left with sine of x over 1, which is the same thing as sine of x, which has now been verified. Uh, in the last example here, I have 1 plus sine of y times 1 plus sine of negative y equals cosine squared of y. So again, when you're looking for an operation, when you have something, you know, multiply binomials um, or you just multiply uh, monomials or trig terms, uh, when you have adding and subtracting, apply, apply that operation. So before we apply the operation, though, I want to rewrite sine using my even odd identities. Well, again, sine is an odd identity. Um, so therefore, sine of negative y will be negative sine of y. So when I go ahead and rewrite that, I have 1 plus sine of y times 1 plus, oops, I'm sorry, 1 minus sine of y. Now what I'm basically going to do is apply FOIL here. So first, outer, inner, last. And when multiplying, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative sine is negative sine of y. 1 plus sine of y is going to be a positive sine of y, and then sine of y times negative sine of y is negative sine squared of y. Now, I really didn't have to write the whole thing out, but I figured I would. Um, you can see that this is also a representation of a difference of two squares. So you should know that the middle two terms are going to um, add to 0. So therefore, I'm just left with 1 minus sine squared of y equals. Now, again, going back to our Pythagorean identities, Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So therefore, if I subtract the sine on both sides, I get 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared of y. And now it's been verified. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There's just a couple examples for you to be able to verify trigonometric identities using our cofunction and even odd identities. Thanks.